<laughs> bro, you That's stupid. hilarious, bro. Yes, man. Y'all don't know how excited I am for this episode of the Third World Podcast. I'm sitting here with my brother from another my mother, boy. DePaul Foxworth. This dude here, he is full of value. He is way beyond his years, like as far as being here on earth. He He's so wise, man. <laughs> Even though he's younger than me, I look up to this dude a lot because I learn a lot from him. I was talking to my dad about yesterday about the people that you have in your circle and like just telling him some of the conversations that we have. And he was like, what? Like, he said that? Like I was telling him about our last conversation that we had whenever you, whenever I was like, Pa, I need your help. with So you say, you don't need my help, see money? <laughs> 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 see money, you don't need my help. You got this? He said, you just need, you just need to sit down. And you just need to do it because you got this, man. And my dad, because, like, your circle is so important, but we'll get into that later, bro. I want you to tell the audience who you are, where you're from. Just give us the uh, the DePaul rundown, bro. Thank you so much for coming on the Thank show, Thank you, baby. bro. Thank you for having me, bro. Yes. I like that you got the wind ring on. It's like it's yes. like uh, Wonder Twins Unite, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <Crazy. laughs> so, yeah, man. But uh, I'm, I'm blessed to be here, bro. Thank you for having me. So uh, my name is DePaul Foxworth, and uh, been knowing Chance since literally probably in diapers. Uh, his his sister and I were the same age. We grew up together, and you know Thanks. Chance by default was in that in, in yes. that uh, category too. <laughs> so, uh, but basically from Foxworth, Mississippi, uh, grew up uh, there, New Orleans, and then uh, Southern Louisiana, and then came back, did some high school in uh, Columbia, and then did two years of community college at a Jones in uh, Ellisville, then transferred to LSU, did two years at LSU, dropped out, uh, worked for Verizon Wireless for a year and a half, and then uh, after working there, uh, quit <laughs> after a year and a half and started Man. a business. <laughs> and uh, and then basically I've been in business for three years ever since then, and uh, haven't looked back, man. Yeah. So, so we're going gonna, gonna to have to back up and we're going to dissect this because you said a lot of good stuff in that first, just telling who you are. So grew up... First of all, the Paul Fox. Do you own Foxworth? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. And and it's funny because uh, you you know obviously you know that, but yeah. uh, for pe like for people, if I'm not in Mississippi, if somebody uh, asks like where you're from, I remember on my license it used to say the Paul Foxworth from Foxworth, Mississippi, and uh, and the address to the house was like Foxworth Circle or something. They'd be like, whoa, 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 and then they, you know I'd have to explain it every time. Like, who am I talking uh, yeah, to? Yeah, dude? Who is but, this dude? Uh, now like license does not say that, so I don't get that question unless I bring it up. But, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. nice dude. Well, dude, so we grew up together. We can go through a thousand stories. Yes, literally. One story that, that sticks out to me is you looked me in my face and you told me, you were like, dude, the people that you hang around, them people ain't really your friends. Do you remember telling me that? I do remember telling you that. You yeah. told me off. And I was just like, man, shut up. <laughs> like so childish. That's why I say like I look up to you because a couple of years like developed and later on, the people who you called out, they they were gone. Wow. You know? Yeah. And like stuff like that that sticks with me because you to me that's real friendship for you to for you to look at somebody and have those tough conversations. Bro, what gave you that type of foundation to be able to look at somebody that you really love? Because I know you love me. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> look at somebody you really love and say, yo, you think you think they for you, but they ain't for you. And not look back. Well, <clears throat> I think the biggest thing, especially with you, man, like, um, it, like you have a, the biggest light ever. You know, like you've always been that guy. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know if it's because you know you're the only boy out of all the sisters that you oh have. My gosh. But uh, <laughs> but outside of that, I mean, you've just you've always been a, a great role model, man. Especially from um, just a great example of a man, dude. Like you just always have been. And Thanks, even in dude. high school, I know you like nobody's perfect, right? Yeah. And so even in high school, like yeah, we were all childish. Like I had my childish ways too, but um, you've just always been a, a good example. So I, I would look up to you, like I look at you as a big brother, yeah. like literally. Yeah. And so uh, when I but when I hold somebody to that, um, I guess large of importance in my life, um, you know, I if you're going to be a part of my circle, I I expect to hold you accountable to be to be like accountable to the people in your circle because. This thing I heard, uh, this was like I was 18. It was my first personal development book uh, that a guy handed to me while I was at Jones. And he said, uh, in the book, it said, you're the average of the five main people you hang around. Bro. And so if Bro. your average is not good, like if, if the people you hang around, your five is not good, but you're a part of my five, they're affecting your average, which affects mine. 
So if you're going to be in my circle, you can't be losing with other people and then say you're a part of my circle because I'm not, I'm not going to be able to improve and be better. And it doesn't make me better than anybody or anything. I don't look at it like that. I just, it's, it's, it's called uh, quality control of your environment at that point, you know? Wow. So <laughs> wow. you're just controlling your environment. And so for Golly. you, knowing that, like, I don't, I don't ever see myself not having you in my circle. Like, I literally have, I can count on one hand people that I can pick up the phone and call and, and be like, this is my ride or die, no matter what happens. Um, and I can talk to about anything, like all levels. Because you can talk to some people about finances. You can talk to some people about health. You can talk to some people about marriage and relationships. But to talk about all of those in one, in spirituality, to talk about all those in one, those are like the five I'm talking about. And so you're one of those. Wow. Like you're definitely one of those. So, um, and then I got like four others. But, uh, and you know who they are. Because if you're, if you're going to be part of my, my five, you have to know my other four, you know? That's so powerful. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so basically... Uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, you don't have connections with other people, but they, they're there to specialize in one area of your life. But in all areas, I, I hold you to that standard. If you're going to be a person that I talk to about all those things, like, heck yeah, man. Like, yeah. It, I have to hold you accountable because in ways that I need help, that you know you're going to hold me accountable so why not I do the that's same so thing that's so true that's so true dude wow man yeah. i i remember that to this day man i remember it to this day and the biggest thing was like you didn't sugarcoat nothing and for me that was like man for somebody to look at me and tell me the truth with that much love and like bro you bigger than me but i would knock you out bro you know that's that's kind of how it felt like a little <laughs> brother coming up against a big brother and like bro i will i will punch you in your stomach you gonna get me but i'm gonna get a lick in and it's gonna hurt you know that's the kind of conviction i felt from you bro and like to this day like for real i appreciate it bro <laughs> well, i care about you man. yeah you man want, and it boy. made me look at it it made me look at my circle like yo and to this day bro like i have like accountability checkups with people that not everybody get back with me whenever I say, yo, tell me some like tell me some about myself. How can I grow? Yeah. You know, we have conversations on the regular and you tell me things about about me, like that need to be better. You tell me how to run my business better, which we can segue now into, bro, what do you do? You said you walked away from your job when? So I walked away from my job <laughs> J July third, twenty seventeen. I'll never forget the day. Because uh, Caitlin had got this dog. Uh, so she had a dog already, and this dog had basically, uh, this was my way of saying, hey, because I didn't like animals at first. So I got her this dog. It's like, hey, little baby, I love you, and I got you another dog <laughs> to show you that I, I care about you, and I care about dogs, you know. <laughs> and this dog broke its paw that day, and I had already put in my two weeks because uh, God had spoke to me one day and told me, uh, you don't need your job anymore, so, you know, you're done. Just like that. Just like that. And um, and there's a whole backstory of how that happened, but uh well how i feel it happened but it happened and so i put in my two weeks and um and so basically the my boss told me you can't come back to work at this company if you quit before your two weeks is up and this dog broke its paw that day we had to go to the vet caitlin's crying so i was just like you know what and she told me she was like quit just turn in turn in your your uh your keys and all that stuff like all your stuff to get in the back room and all that. just turn it in and i and i was she was like i need you and she was like and you're not you're not going back to this job and i and i had to like really rest on what god told me like Quit your job. You don't need it anymore. That's ex like the exact sentence. And uh, and so basically I went in and I put in, you know, I just handed him my stuff. And my boss was like, all right, you can't ever come work for us anymore, like ever. And I was like, OK. And so that's when I knew, like, all right, I can't turn back. Wow. You know? What would you so, do? Uh, so anyways, uh, so now, yeah, because <laughs> he's like, so what do you do? <laughs> so <laughs> what, what did you do after oh, that? So bro? Um, literally a, a week later, uh, we were involved in that network marketing business. Amway, yes, yes. And um, and so we had like a trip or something like a conference for that business. And then uh, we it was in New York. So we had to fly up to New York. We came back like a week later and drove to Atlanta to find a place. And we moved to Atlanta the next week. And we had been feeling like that. We had wanted to do that for maybe a month, uh, but we started feeling stagnant because we weren't making that move. And so we just did it all. Like after I quit on the third, by the end of the month, we had moved to Atlanta by August, by August 1st of uh, 2017. So, uh, but, but two months before the day that like he told me to quit, I had bought a course online about social media marketing. 
And so uh, you did what? I bought a course. There was a keyword one. <laughs> you you did what? I bought a course. So you invested. I into invested into myself. Okay. Um, because I would hear all these like I would see all these business owners come in Verizon and they just look so happy. And I was just like, man, like I want that happiness, like because they can just come and go as they please. Where I was, I would look at this, I would look at the window and, and like the door because it was all glass of people coming into the store and walking out. And I'd be like, man, I can't leave this store or I stop making money because my time was there. Oh my and so I'd see these people just come and go as they please and they'd be so happy. And like some of these people were making, like they just make like a hundred thousand a year, but they were so happy. Like I met a guy, he's like, yeah, I make a hundred thousand a year t- uh, bringing people to fish. Like he just basically took people on a, on a tour and he helped them catch a few fish and they paid him money, but he did it, you know, enough for the year to make. So I guess he was making more like eight grand a month or something doing that. And he was happy. He's re- that was like his like retirement thing. And I was just like, holy crap, you took a hobby and, and made it a business, you know? And so, um, and there was one in particular, this lady, she told me, she said, there's a Steve Harvey video and he's like, just jump, like you gotta jump. Yeah. And so anyways, all that added up uh, and that day, it was a Sunday, I was working retail, it was retail sales. It wasn't doing bad, I mean, I was making $53,000 a year with no degree, you know, except like an associate's. Uh, so it's not bad for some people, And um, but it just was, it was not w- w- what I needed for my life. It wasn't yeah. a healthy environment. Wow. Um, and so basically, you know, it ended up turning out for my for my thing. But anyways, back to this course that I invested in, I started at LLC and then two months later, that's when the, the I actually quit. So I started in May, the LLC, but it was for a marketing company. And so that marketing company is uh, what I own to this day, but I changed the name of it like a few times. Uh, like Why'd you change it? <laughs> so um, I started off because when I quit, I was like, I'm going to do sales. But I'm going to do it for myself. And so I was like, what am I going to go after? I'm going to go after doctors. And so I was... T- any, anybody who had anything to do with medicine, I was knocking on their door. So um, I changed it to MD Advertising Agency mm-hmm. and uh, did that for a little bit. And then I saw, like, once you buy your first, like, online course, you start to, like, be like, oh, man, what else can I learn? You know, you start to kind of chase shiny objects, what we call it. Um, so did that for, like, a year. And then I saw, like, a real estate thing and went to chase this real estate thing. And then I came back and I, and, uh, and I realized, like, hey, real estate, creative real estate investing, like flipping properties and all this stuff. Uh, it sounds good, it's flashy, but it really is a longer process. You need, you know, you need a little more time and a little more money, like on the side, to help you get through it. Yeah. And uh, and so I was like, the other thing too, I was about to uh, have my son, and I, you know, I was I was married, about to have a son, and I was like, all right, I want to be home with my kid. I don't want to be out here looking at houses and stuff, you know. So uh, so I ran back to digital marketing, and I named the company Foxworth Marketing. And then I was, and then after that, I was like, well, I'm going after uh, mortgage brokers, which is who I serve now, and I was like. Um, I don't, I don't need to name the company after me because I, I read a book and it was just talking about how like people who name businesses after themselves, generally they stay small because it's their name and it's like a pride thing. And so wow. when you name a business <laughs> something else, it also makes it better for if you sell it because when you sell a company, you get multiples on, on uh, the, the profits that it generates in a year. And so when you sell that company, it's easier to sell when it's named like something else that has nothing to do with your name. Uh, because it's just a change of owners. You know, you ever seen like a place where like, oh, we're the new ownership. So yeah. it's the same thing, but they didn't have to change their name. So the clientele knows it's still the same name. It's just under new new management. So wow. it's a better asset at that point versus yeah. if you named it like the Paul's marketing and if it was doing a million a year or something. Yeah, because you know. a lot of people want to see their name in the lights. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. So and I see what you're saying yeah, when you say not pride. about you. And it, it could be a pride thing. And, you know, and but in it being a pride thing, it becomes your own prison because you feel like you have to be there because your name's on it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's so good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like That's right? so good. Yeah. Like like Laura's bakery, like yeah. Laura's back yeah. there baking, you Laura know what I mean? better be back there. <laughs> yeah. I'm going somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to Judy's bakery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I don't want to be Laura's bakery, you know what I mean? Like like I'm saying, if I own Laura's, I don't want to be Laura back there baking cakes, you know? Wow, yeah. But that's so hard for entrepreneurs to get out of that mindset, dude. And that's yeah. what keeps – because I can look in my family and see businesses that have been started by my family members, but they haven't been able to kind of work their way out, you know? Yeah. So going back to your story of the marketing company, what was the what was the last name you stuck with? Um, so what what it is now, it's predictable VA loans. And so um Nice. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so uh the reason I named it that is because um so I'm in a niche, which is the mortgage industry, and then in the mortgage industry they have different loan programs and so a particular loan program is VA loans. So it's just veterans, you know, uh the US government gives veterans the opportunity to get housing 
by uh, giving them veteran benefits. So it's just VA loan benefits. And so it stands for veteran, veteran administration. Like it's, it's a certain loan program. So um, these are like easy deals for these mortgage brokers, uh, no matter what state they're in, you know? So um, like they're a lot easier than other deals like, a, like a FHA or conventional loans. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I was like, since these are easy deals, this is my niche, I'm gonna brand the company around that. And so at any point, if I ever wanna sell it, it's still predictable VA loans, or if um, if I want to get acquired by like a, a mortgage brokerage, they can just basically acquire it, you know, and it's and they don't have to change the name, and it's and it's the system will work for their business too, you know. Something that I just realized is like you playing the loan game. Yes. You thinking you're not thinking like right now in the moment, bro. You thinking about like whenever you get ready to sell the business, right? Absolutely, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's pretty powerful. That's a really dope mindset to have because a lot of the times we want instant success instant results we're like an instantaneous um generation absolutely and that's not that's not good have you ever had that mindset of like oh yeah one? <laughs> tremendously so uh obviously like i didn't get here without any setbacks right so um the times where i was just trying to put food on the table like man like on this journey from when i quit to now uh like now my my business basically takes care of my life and um and it and i have like employees and it takes care of their life right um, but the, before when it was just me, like I was just trying to pay the rent, bro. Like I remember having eviction notices like every month, like on the door and, um, my wife, like just like basically going through it with me, you know, like just basically like, Hey baby, I believe in you. Like we're going to get this done. You know? Um, I mean, I got so many eviction notice stories, like of how Let's hear one, bro. <laughs> all right. So, um, I never forget, uh, this was like four months after I quit my job. And so I was in Atlanta, my expenses kind of went up, even though I had six months saved, but it dropped down to like four. And I kept living how I was living when I had my job, but I had no income coming in at this point. So anyways, um, I had been door knocking in October um, all day, and I had ran out of money. It was basically was living off my whatever credit cards I had at that time. And uh, for, November, for the November's rent, I had basically uh, closed $2,500 in clients like, like October 31st and was able to pay it, right? So I didn't, I didn't have an eviction notice that day. The next month, I lost all those clients. And so for November at the end, my wife had signed up for uh, Rover, right? And so it's like this dog walking app. And so in Atlanta, where he had this one bedroom, one bath apartment, we walked over Thanksgiving uh, and our rent was like, I think $1,200 at the time. We walked over Thanksgiving, 19 dogs in one week. <laughs> No matter the size, bro, because everybody's like, you know, for Thanksgiving, especially in a city like that, people are going home or wherever to go visit family. So they're like, hey, can you watch my dog? So she just accepted like every single one of them that she got. And it ended up being like two grand that we made in a week from walking 17 dogs. But like it was some of them were like really big dogs. Dude. I remember for that week, we had like seven big dogs in a one bedroom, one bath apartment with us. Oh, my gosh, dude. Like we locked one. We, had, we locked two in the bathroom. Like. It just so they wouldn't, you know, leave and then they wouldn't fight with the other dogs. Like, dude, it was <laughs> looking back. I'm like, what the heck was I thinking? Bro, but like you, your back was against the wall. Yeah, man. and we did it. And it paid the rent the next month, right? So now um, that's one eviction notice story. It's pretty crazy. Uh, so I had another <laughs> one. Uh, so I remember this was uh, for we got married 2018. So. 20 middle of 2018 all the way so like my success is really just starting to happen now by the way but 2018 to 2019 we had an eviction notice all, like on the door every month and so i never forget this one story um i got an eviction notice and my mother-in-law was at you know our house i mean at, at our apartment and i was just like okay um you know she she like she's a she's a checker and so i don't want to say she's nosy because that sounds bad because uh She's just a checker, you know what I mean? Like, you know, every it's parent. It's instinct. Yeah, it's yeah. instinct. So every parent wants to make sure, hey, you taking care of my daughter, you know? Say, and, you know, that's just how they are. So I had this uh, lady, and she slid the eviction notice in the door, right? And so you hear, shh, like in the door. And so uh, my mother-in-law, she's there, and she's like, you know, phone closed something. She's like, hey, look, um, the, the lady just put a notice in the door. I said, oh, okay, hold on a second. Let me go grab it. I literally popped it open, <laughs> and I saw it was an eviction notice. <laughs> And I looked at her, I said, oh, it's just a maintenance request. They're, they're just going to come do maintenance on the apartment. 
And so she was like, oh, okay. And so I hurry up and I took it and I like tore it up and put it at the bottom of the trash and like her up and threw away something like to put like something liquid on top of it <laughs> just so she wouldn't catch it. Bro. And she knows the story. So she watches this. She, she knows. She knows now. Um, oh but God. we, I never forget, like we laughed about that because it was like, man, like, you know, we, we didn't want her to know. And um, so basically, I mean, with that, man, I had to like drive Uber to pay the rent. But like I was getting up at five in the morning to do it, um, and I would drive from five to eight a.m. and then I would work on my business, and then I would drive from five to midnight, and then I would like do it again, like every single day. Question: Could you yeah. be where you are now if you hadn't gone through? No, man. But but dude, absolutely not. Looking at it, man, that's what a lot of that's what I'm scared of. That's what a lot of people fear is jumping out there and failing. Yeah, and. I, I, man, I talk about this with Mo all the time. The the businesses that we look up to the most, they fail every month, bro. The reason that I know they fail is because they tell us they fail. Yeah. They have all these. If you if I open my phone right now, check this out, and I go to my applications. Okay, I'm at my applications. How many updates do I have? Let's look at this. This is this is pretty cool. Wow, this is eighty-seven okay. updates. Yeah, you you don't have to update something that's working right. No, nah. right. <laughs> so I got Airbnb, that's a billion-dollar business. Yeah, uh, SoundCloud, Twitter, Xfinity, Google Home, Google Translate, Lime, bro, Revel, Sonic. You telling me Sonic, a billion-dollar corporation, has to update? But dude, the point that I want to make, man, is so many people are afraid of failing. Yeah. But dude, there's so much closure, and there's so much that you learn about yourself. I don't. I, I. I bet you didn't even know you had that in you. No, not at all, man. It's it's something about putting your back against the wall. Cause um, so the w the way that my company started to grow um, and the direction it's going now. So uh, right now we're on a run rate to do half a million this year. Wow. And so um, and this is like really like the first year like last year my tax returns were like just being honest enough for it um were twenty thousand dollars but i'm saying Dude, that's but <laughs> as of today like july we already cleared over 100 grand nepal <laughs> This dude is from Columbia, <laughs> from Foxworth, Mississippi. Went to Columbia High School, bro. I'm so proud. Thank you, bro. <laughs> like to see, keep talking, bro. Well, it, and it's not about the money necessarily, but sometimes it is, man. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't, I don't want to talk to people who tell me all the success tips, but you ain't got no bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so sometimes it is. That's closure for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, so, keep going. Right. I'm sorry. Well, no, nah, you're good. But uh, I'm just saying, like, that's a testament to like exponential growth and what yeah. can happen. Because um, so last September, 2019, I went to uh, so a few months before September, I was I had told Kaylin because she was kind of getting at her you know, in man, like I had my son, you know, I'm sitting here struggling, like getting a client, losing a client, getting a client, losing a client. And, um, she told me, she was like, babe, you know, you may not, you may, she kind of started losing hope, man. She's like, maybe you started, you got to hang it up. And I remember I was like, all right, you know, but for me, it's like, man, I've been doing this for too long. I can't just give up now. And I was like, I just have to prove to myself that I can make $10,000 a month, like off of this business. And, um, and so I just felt that in my spirit, a guy was like, hey, look, invest in this mastermind. And so it was in, sep it was in September, but I invested in July. Uh, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta hop in here. You said God told you to invest in something? Yeah. So you're telling me it just didn't come? No, nah, it just didn't come. No, God nah. ain't the type of guy that just give you stuff? No, nah, no. Nah. You had to invest? <laughs> I had to invest. <laughs> Keep going, bro. So <laughs> I invested this. It was like, uh, I want to say 750 and it was in Atlanta. And so I just told her, I was like, hey, look, this is what I'm feeling. God's telling me in my heart. Um, $750? Yeah. And so I invested it. And so I went and while I was there, uh, I met my first like like mentor in this space uh, that like paid coaching. His name was Ravi. So awesome guy. Uh, I still owe that dude today. You know, he's he's the man. So anyways, um, I invested seventy five hundred bucks into him at that event. And so seventy five hundred. Yes. OK. And this was like all I had left, like no cash, no credit. I mean, this is the last bit of credit I had, but no cash. And uh, and so that's seventy five hundred total. He let me do it in payments. But 
uh, all I had left was like $2,500 left on my credit card. And so um, what he did was basically, uh, he told me, he's, I was like, dude, do not take this money if you, don't, if you can't help me, you know? And he was like, I'm gonna get you to where you need to go. And so uh, anyways, like a few months after that, um, he helped me hire my first like uh, assistant, which is virtual. So I have, I have three employees now in the Philippines. And so they work for me for um, $2 an hour, but the US dollar conversion to Filipino pesos is like really big. So it's, it sounds bad, but it's not. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, to pay her, because I had no more money, I had to flip books on Amazon just to make sure her, her pay was taken care of. And so um, with doing that though, over like a few months, so by January, so that was September, she got hired in October. By January, uh, we had hit 10K, and then like in a month, like finally, right? And then by February, we did 20K, like the next month. So, and then it just, you know, it's just been going up wow. from there. And so, um, so basically though, that investment was like my last, but it was really like that step on faith. And if I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have gone to the event and I wouldn't have met him, and then if I wouldn't have took the faith to invest him, because dude, not just giving a 2,500 of your last credit That's card a space. a lot. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Like, I just heard God tell me, have faith. That's all he said. And he gave me peace because I was like, did I just do the right thing? And this is a decision I didn't talk to my wife about. I told her after the fact. And she could have, like, took my head off, but she said, I trust you as the head of our household to lead us. And she didn't take my oh head off. God, dude. And now she's, you know. So I want to I I stop right there. So <laughs> there's no way you could have seen the series of events that were going to happen. And, dude, that's so scary because – as an entrepreneur and as like business owners and all this kind of thing, all these kind of things, bro, we are so afraid to take that first step. Yeah. But what we can't see, we have about a 10,000 foot view where God has like a 60 infinite foot view. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like his, his view of like what he, what he can see versus what we can see is unmeasurable. And we can, what we can see is, um, like I'm going to this conference, but what God can see is like, yo, he going to this conference and I'm finna introduce him to Raul. What's his name? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, his name is Ravi. Ravi. Yeah, I'm finna yeah. introduce him to Ravi. Yeah. And, uh, after I introduce him to Ravi, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prop, like Ravi gonna take him to this person, this person, this person, and he gonna give him the money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, we're so afraid, man. So like breaking through that fear barrier is a struggle for a lot of people, man. Anything that you can give on breaking through that barrier. Um, so I'm like what we're talking about. I'm just telling my essentially my testimony of what's happened in my life up to this point. Um, so I can't sit here and take any credit for any of this because it's easy to talk about now, but it wasn't easy in the moment. Like if I were to go back and tell you I just did that, you probably think I'm crazy, you know. But because of the situation I was in, but um, you just have to let God lead you, and that's really it. Like I can't really say, oh, it's it's me. I I just decided to do that. Like yeah. nah, like I get it. He uh, he gave me enough strength to do it, and put my family on the line to do it, and by by allowing him to work in my life. All right, I'm not perfect. Right, I still drop some f bombs every now and then. All right, but at the end of the day, my relationship with him is good enough to where he's willing to guide me if I ask. And I always ask. And you have to be willing to, whenever you ask, you have to be willing to, to go. To go. Yeah. That's, that's the, so. That's the kicker yeah, right that's there, That's the bro. kicker. A lot of people aren't willing to yeah. go because it's not going to be anything that you can logically piece together. Like the decision you think you're, you need to make is not the one he wants you to make. And it's always the most uncomfortable. Like quit your job. You don't need it anymore. God. Like that, I still hear it in my, like oh my just God. today. I remember I was like, Lord, I know he didn't just say that. And I've been, I was so excited for it. But who, if, if I, I knew all the stuff I had to go through to get to where I'm at now, I honestly can't say I would have, I would have listened if he would have shown me all the stuff I had to go through. Wow. Cause bro, it's been a lot in the past three years. It's been a lot. But I realized if I wouldn't have gone through all that stuff, yeah. he couldn't help. I wouldn't be able to manage the responsibilities he's given me now that's a powerful word bro manage because i believe um god says he 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 says like i'm not gonna give you more if you can't handle what you have now so you obviously had to become a better manager in order to be where you are now absolutely man and 
what I've gained from this is you really have to invest in yourself. That's how you become a better manager. Absolutely. You know, to more is yeah. given more is uh what is it? To more is given more is required. Required. Yeah. yeah. So like if you want more, man, you, you got to invest more. more. Yeah. You got to give invest, more. Yeah. You got to learn more. Yeah. You got to work more. So dude, that's so powerful, man. What about what about and going out? Um we can end with this. What are some let me see how can I put this? What do you have planned for your business for the next couple of years? So for the next couple of years, um, I definitely want to be at like the 2.4 million mark in revenue. And uh, we right now currently we're at like around 40 to 45 percent profit. So that'll be a million profit. Right. And so and hold that for a few years and then eventually get acquired. And so with getting acquired, so the my, my I, I first thought you said acquire. I was like, boy, <laughs> me, boy, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> we get acquired again. <laughs> so acquired. Uh, yeah, get acquired. <laughs> got you. So a lot of uh, a lot of business owners, they're like the way they be, like a lot of the way a lot of people become billionaires is they either hold the company and they just grow it like a Bill Gates, you know, with Microsoft. Like that's like his his thing, right? And he just grew that. Um, but a lot of them will take businesses, grow them, and then get acquired. Because on the annual profit of a business, you get multiples on that. So if a business produces a million a year, and it's done that, it has a track record of doing that, they get multiples added onto that. So it can be like three to six times. So if it's a million, you can get six time evaluation. So, wow. the, so the business yeah. is valued at six million, and then you will get cashed out six million for that. And so it's a better building a business, and this is a, another mentor of mine still to this day. His name is Nate Moore. The dude's like, dude's killer. He's thirty four year old guy, uh, owns multiple businesses uh, in Louisiana, and what he he broke that down to me that your business is your best asset. But y what he taught me was that my mind is my best asset. Wow. And it's because as you have these things, right? Like if you as long as you're feeding your your mind, you're exercising, you're feeding you're feeding your uh, your spiritual life. You're, you're feeding your marriage, you're feeding your, you know, the, with your relationships and stuff. He's like, that's going to allow you to be able to handle the, the assets, like the physical assets that you're going to get. And so with a business being your best asset, it's your best asset because it can be multiple, multiplied uh, by however the track record you set that you're in control of. Like, that's the value of it. And so I hope that makes sense. But yeah, that makes sense. And so for me, I remember I used to think like everybody's kind of chasing the real estate thing. Like, oh, do real estate, do real estate. But the value of real estate is controlled by the market around it, where the value of your business is controlled by you and the track, rate that, the track record that you set with growing your business. And so when he helped me understand that, I was like, oh, my gosh, like my business really is my best asset. And so uh, so two years from now, my goal is to have predictable VA loans doing 200000 a month. And that should put me about $2.4 million. Uh, and then, and that's like just in revenue and then also acquire other marketing agencies to do the same thing mm -hmm. and just plug my same systems in. Gotcha. Yeah. That's the one more question mm -hmm. before we end. <laughs> yep. We good. Oh, we good on battery. <laughs> These things, they'll, they'll get hot. They'll shut down the battery and drain. You never know. Oh, cool. Uh, one more. I can crop all that. I can cut all that out. All right. Cool, cool. That. <laughs> 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 all right so dude. This has been amazing. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad uh, my, my, my senses kicked in, my DePaul senses. I told you I had some DePaul senses. They went off and you were like, bro, we headed to, we headed to Columbia right now. So I'm glad my DePaul senses kicked in. Bro, I got one more question for you. What, is some, like, what are some practical things that you can tell people to do in order to just get started? Like with whatever it is, not specifically your business mm -hmm. but just because a lot of people just need that push yeah and they need to hear like something practical yeah I, I, I see all the big nice fluff but like what are some practical things that I can do right now uh, sitting in my room or wake up in the morning and go do in order to start my my journey so every morning um, it's so I'm going to just give you the the basic information that my uh, my I feel like he's my ultimate mentor which is a guy Nate I'm telling you about um, this is th the thing he suggested to me a year ago when I first started getting mentored by him. So he said, control what you're reading, what you're listening to, what you're viewing. And then, um, and then also like, you know, what, what you envision. So basically what he means by that is make sure you 
be careful what you look at, like on TV, right? Yep. Like I don't watch the news. I haven't watched the news in years. I feel like wow. if, if it's important enough for me to know, somebody else would tell me who yeah. watches the news, you know? Wow. <laughs> so, um, cause if, if you sit there and watch coronavirus all day, you're gonna be like, everybody's got coronavirus, right? Uh, the second thing is you need to be careful what you read. So uh, basically like, you know, it's nothing wrong with reading novels every now and then, but I, I don't read novels. I just read personal development books. Uh, so I try to read 10 pages a day in the morning. Uh, and then also, uh, I journal, so I write down my thoughts. Uh, I try to like pray in writing, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. if I'm if I have concerns or like I want to pray to God, I, I write like a letter to God, I and um, and it always it's pretty cool to look back at later when it like comes true or something like that, you know. Uh, and then the other thing too is just like exercise and control your environment. So I get up in the morning, I exercise. What um, time? I get up at five, yeah. Get up at five in the morning. Every morning. Every morning, yeah. Except on weekends. Weekends, I give myself a break. Yeah. Yeah, but um, from Monday, Monday through Friday, what I get up. What time you five. go to bed? I try to go to bed at 10 because we put baby down at like eight. Yeah, but 10 is the latest. And um, and so, yeah, and, and then basically get up in the morning, exercise. And uh, after I exercise, I read. And while I'm exercising, I don't listen to music. I listen to an audio book. Uh, but not like a fictional, like it, it's a personal development book. And, uh, and so then when I get back, I f pull out a real book and like, like a physical book and I read 10 pages uh, and then I journal and then I start my day. And if I don't do that, I feel like off. And so, but the compound effect of that habit over time is you improving yourself and working on yourself. Yeah. And when life starts to hit you, you're gonna be better um, like equipped to handle it. Because like, dude, things happen in business all the time. Like just, just for, just for some like examples, like um, I found out today that from last month to this month, we had a, a 10 grand loss in revenue. And so, um, you know, thankfully it, does, it doesn't affect my lifestyle because we, we're, we're making a good bit. But um, the thing is though, is like, all right, you know, I got to fix that. But if I didn't read and develop myself, I could be like, oh my gosh, like we yeah. lost 10 grand yeah. in like a month, you know? Yeah. But in reality, like it's just a part of it. It's, it's a part of, of business, you know? But because I've went through all the crap in the past for over the over the past three years, like driving Uber, like this is easy. You know what I mean? Like losing ten grand in a month is easy. You know, compared to like you know having an eviction notice or um, you know not knowing where you're gonna eat. You know, stuff like that. So yeah, bro. So that's that's what I wow. think is the is the thing that everybody needs to do is just they need to just control the habits that they have now. And they'll compound. It'll compound. You'll yeah. get all the cars, you get all the house, you get all that stuff, you know, that you want later. But it starts with your personal habits. What yeah. are you working towards? What are you working on today? Yeah. And that's it. Dude, that's so dope, man. Y'all, this dude, I told you, man, this dude is amazing. <laughs> I can't wait to drop this episode, bro. Every freaking person always just builds off of one another, dude. I love so it. So I'm so it. glad. I'm super glad to have you, bro. I thank you so much for uh, taking time out to be here. Man, uh, what about shout outs to any family member? Right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Y'all, I want to shout out my wife, uh, Caitlin Fox, but I wouldn't be here without her. You like, gotta seriously. have a good one, though. Oh, man. Like, behind every man is an even greater wife. So, I she just put out a book, by the way. It's called I Killed My Father's Killer. You guys should definitely go grab it. It's just at uh, kfoxworth.com forward slash I K M F K. That stands for I Killed My Father Killer. Nice. Uh, and so, that's it. That you go there, you can buy the book. Uh, it's like $24.99, but it's a great, great story. So she's an entrepreneur as well. So I think you should definitely check it out. Uh, I want to shout out my son, Lincoln, because he is just like awesome. Uh, he's the reason why I hustle every day, you know? Uh, and then I want to shout out my dad and my mom. Uh, my dad and my mom are huge, like, like really, really big um, pillars. Yeah, bro. pillars to my success, honestly, because mom and dad, they taught me excellence and hard work. And that's really it. Like, that's like the main things that I really appreciate because it was part of building my character, you know? And then I also want to shout out uh, just all my mentors. Like, thank you guys. Thank you guys for investing your time with me. You know, it's especially with you having more than me, It by you doing that, it helped me have more. So um, just thank oh, you for, for letting me be a part of your circle, you know? Dope, and then I, and then I want to thank my five, you know? So uh, I, got, I got some homies out there that have helped me out so many times, like just in my mental and some financially. You know, so I just thank all of you guys. And uh, I mean, it's only five, but you guys know who you are. <laughs> and everybody knows it's you. Man. You know what I mean? Yes, <laughs> man. Dude, thanks so, so much, bro. No problem. Love thank you, you for having me, yes, man. Yes, man. Thank you for having me. So, y'all clap your hands. Give it up for my boy, Deep Paul Foxworth. You got a website? 
Um, so it's funny I don't. Yeah, I don't. I just got okay. a Facebook, dude. Yeah. Like, um, Follow this man. Facebook, yeah. IG. Uh, so I do have Instagram. It's just the Paul Foxworth. Yeah. Um, I don't. So my Instagram, I save for kind of like my personal life. Gotcha. And then like Facebook is for business. So if gotcha. you hit me up on Facebook, I probably won't get you because I got a, an assistant that manages that. But my Instagram, <laughs> you can definitely hit me up, right? Dope, man. Thanks so, so much, dude. No problem, brother. Thank you Sweet. for having me. Sweet. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bro, that was incredible, man. Thank Golly. you, man. But you ain't you ain't you ain't bucking me up, oh, bro. Man, that was so good, dude. We got four fifty, bro. We don't play no freaking games. I'm tired of games, bro. That's what I'm talking I'm about. So That's what I'm games, talking about. Bro. What the heck, man? Man, you got me got me excited, bro. I like I like to talk about stuff like that.